Good morning. This is the Ramblings of Indiscipline Mind Podcast for Tuesday, November 3rd, 2015. So it is about 9.30 in the morning. I've uh, already written about 800 words. I'd like to get another 2,700 today. I also am going to finish up painting the man cave today. Um, I did a little bit this morning already, and I've got just a bit more touch-up to do. I think it should take me about half an hour, tops, to get that done. And then, um, yeah, then it's time to clean up and move in. So I'm looking forward to that quite a bit. Also, I stepped up on the scale today, and, and I was down to 200 pounds. So, yeah. It's looking like a like a like a good day. I'm off to vote because we're doing voting today for mayor of our little town here, and then I'm gonna scoot over to the library and just spend a little time writing there, just to kind of get out of the house um, a bit. So uh, it was fun yesterday, writing at Starbucks. Just kind of, kind of have another location to be at. I am around 7,700 words in total right now. So I'm, I, I think my goal of getting uh, to 10,000 words by the end of today is doable. Basically, I've got to do that by about four today because I got class tonight. So, for maybe 4.30 at the outside, i got to be hopping in the car and, and driving the class. So, But, uh, yeah, it's been a good couple days. I've been busy. Uh, hasn't been a lounge around kind of day, kind of a couple days. You know, I've, I did some painting yesterday, and I really thought I was going to get done yesterday, and there was just... With management of brushes and 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 you know paint colors and and whatnot, um, it was just wasn't going to happen. So uh, I got a jump start on it this morning early, and and then I need to finish up this one thing. And uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with my experiment to edge to do it just on my own because I had these. I had these, um, along these baseboards, I, I, I had broken down and I taped them because I figured it wouldn't take very long to tape them. Uh, it actually took longer than I thought it would. And I had all sorts, and this is along the light wall, and then I was painting the baseboards in dark paint. And um, all along the wall, um, Where, where the light paint was. I, I'd done this. And, and when I pulled the tape off, there was all sorts of areas where little bits of little bits of the dark paint had, had bled underneath the tape, and it just looked ragged. It didn't look very nice. So I went back over that. That's one of the things I did yesterday, and just edged it with the brush. And it looked so much nicer. So I was doing the light... I was doing the light... Uh, the light... Uh, what do you call them? I want to say border. That's not right. Whatever. The thing at the bottom. But I know I just said it. I can't think of it. I was doing the light ones on the dark wall. And I just let it slop over a little bit. And then I'm going to edge it nicely from the, uh, with the dark paint today. That's the main thing. I just got a couple spots I got to fix in the dark paint. And that's it. And then I'm done. Done! It's going to be so nice. So nice. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Getting that puppy done. What I thought about, what I thought I would talk about today is edgy humor, especially edgy humor in older movies. I was listening to Christiana Ellis's podcast, watching 100 movies. Uh, that's her and Mike Mateen, and they're watching. They're going through the AFI uh, movie list. And I don't recall the name of the movie that they were talking about, but it was an old 
It was a Cary Grant movie. It was an older movie. And they had this joke. So you had him and whoever the female lead was, and I forget. So, apparently at the beginning of this film, whoever the leading lady was, Was was kicking Cary Grant? I think it was Cary Grant out of the house. You know they were they were getting a divorce, or at least they were separating, and they kind of had a tumultuous relationship throughout the course of the movie. And at one point, Cary Grant's talking to um, another guy. I want to say it was Jimmy Stewart, but I might be misremembering. Who's kind of like you know his his ex-wife's? I think they were divorced. New love, and I don't know. Uh, whoever the other person was, I'll say Jimmy Stewart just because it's convenient. Made the comment that uh, you know most writers were known for beating their wives, and. Cary Grant looked at the leading lady and says, yeah, I've thought about being a writer. <laughs> Which is a funny, a funny thing. Um, but they commented on, on you know, wow, that was kind of inappropriate. And it is. But when you think about it, how much, how much humor comedy is based off of stuff that is inappropriate. I mean, there's whole movies that have been made um, that, that's all about people being inappropriate. And that's kind of what, that's kind of, I, I think, the draw to like the Borat movies and whatever the, the other movie that guy did. Um, Tasha Barra Conan, I think it's a Cohen, I think his name was. You know, because the draw to that one was, well, he was being inappropriate for real, and people didn't realize that it was for a movie. Supposedly, that was the that was the conceit, if you will. But it's funny because, and I've seen this not just in Christiana's podcast, but I've seen it other places. Is if we're watching a movie. In uh, you know, and, and it happens to be an older movie. It's a you know, it's from the 30s or the 40s, and it's it's black and white, maybe. And you know, they'll have some sort of joke like that. That's kind of like, mm. yeah. I, I saw I saw something where uh, a YouTube video not not too long ago where they were they were talking about Revenge of the Nerds and how much trouble you would get in if you did pretty much anything that they did in that movie. You know, because they 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 broke. You know, there, there there were so many things that, you know, laws that they broke and and things that you just might not you know today that movie may not fly if you were to put that out new, new because it was. Uh, you know, it might be a little too edgy these days. But then again, I don't know that that's the case, because. We like edgy humor just as well as, you know, any other generation. You know, I remember when Eddie Murphy released uh, Raw, and it was just such a big deal because, oh my gosh, he said the F word about every other word, supposedly. Um, I don't know that I, if, I, if I saw that, it was well after. Because I was like high school, maybe, when that came out. But if you ever go to a comedy club, uh, you know, there's there's edginess all around. There's all sorts of discussion about inappropriate, um, inappropriateness. We went, we once went, uh, my wife uh, had this friend, she went to, 
high school with, I believe, who has since sadly died, but she was she she was a stand-up comic. And she was actually coming to Oakland University here. That's not too far. And we went to see her. And you know, she's a large gal, or she was a large gal. Um, but what you didn't know, and we talked to her a little bit before the show, and what you didn't know was that she was probably wearing a bra uh, a couple sizes bigger than she needed to, and she had that sucker packed with stuff. And so over the course of the show, you know, she's building this narrative. There was one, you know, and, and most of the people there, we were kind of, this was a number of years ago, but we were, we were still the oldest ones there because it was, it was held on campus in this little, you know, end of the cafeteria that, you know, they kind of built a, it had a little stage there and they would just bring in, you know, they would bring in, um, you know, comedians that were like on their way from Chicago to Detroit kind of thing. They would stop off here maybe. And she had this whole, and it was funny as heck. It was largely inappropriate, but it was funny as heck. And she's pulling all this stuff out. I mean, at one point she pulled out a full size champagne bottle <laughs> from her bra. All this is coming from her bra. And it was, it was pretty hilarious, but it was hilarious because it was inappropriate. It was inappropriate because she was, you know, acting like she was making moves on a, on a, on a, on, a, on somebody half her age, you know, a, a guy that was there in the front row, half her age, and it was inappropriate because she's reaching into her shirt and she's pulling all this stuff out of her shirt. But it was, it was, it was so funny. So I, I think that's that's just the thing. You know, we, we look at something through the through the lens of history and we think, well, you know, that was a wholesome time. And I got to tell you that, you know, listening to the, you must remember this podcast, you know, these, these stars back in the 1930s, they drank around, they screwed around, uh, you know, left and right, just as much as anybody you see today. They got into compromising positions uh, the difference was they had studios that would, that would, um, you know, they would get the stories killed. They had they had people there that their whole job was to keep their movie stars out of the news if they were doing something they shouldn't be doing, because back then they they carefully crafted personas for these people and they didn't want them to screw it up because that would mean screwed up movie sales. So, so yeah, I just, it was just, that was just something that struck me and I wrote it down as a topic. So I think comedy's comedy, no matter what age it is. And, uh, by and large, you know, if it's inappropriate, if it makes you a little bit uncomfortable, it's, it's fodder, fodder for comedy. It doesn't matter whether it's 1910, 1940, or 2015. But I think I'll leave that there. I am, I'm here at the library. I got to get writing. So I will be back tomorrow, back to work, back on the drive to work, and I'll be talking to you then. So be seeing you.